Hi, Janko Redgers here from Gigaom TV. I'm here with Sundar Pichai, the uh, senior vice president of Chrome. And uh, you had a big announcement today, Chromebooks. And to the average consumer, Chromebooks may seem a little bit like Google's take on netbooks, which haven't been that successful. So tell us why you want to succeed in this market. You know, we, we think of this as bringing a fundamentally different computing experience to notebooks, which is what Chromebooks are. We think it'll be very successful because it's designed for how actually people really live on their computers today, not what computer manufacturers and PC OEMs and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the personal computing ecosystem have made decisions for the last 30 years. So this is designed around how people live and use the web today. So we think it will be very successful. And part of the announcement was a business initiative. You're going to offer subscriptions essentially to this as a service. And working with businesses can be hard because it can be time consuming. Contracts take a long time to negotiate. And if you go into government, it's going to take even longer. I think Google has made some, some experiences with this in the, in the corporate space with Android and BlackBerry as a competitor. How do you want to speed up this process and address businesses faster? Maybe? Look, even going through the pilot program, the interest from companies and schools and governmental institutions has been amazing. Part of the reason you have these long life cycles is it's extraordinarily costly to make the decision and deploy. You cannot change it. This is a very different model. Tomorrow you can decide, I'm going to take 50 people in the company and get them on Chromebooks. And you just pay the same monthly subscription per user. And you can tomorrow decide to add 50, 50 more. So we expect people to approach these decisions very, very differently. You can start partial deployments and roll it out in your companies over time. So I think simplifying this process will greatly help us drive adoption. You already mentioned you also target education institutions for the schools. What kind of schools specifically are you talking about? And have you lined some up already that are in, have expressed interest? So many schools express interest in a pilot program. You know, unfortunately, we could only select a few. Uh, but every, there are many schools who are in active conversations with us, including some of our pilot testers. want to expand this now beyond the pilot program to deploying Chromebooks. Of course, schools are, especially public institutions, is in kind of a funding crisis in general. So paying $20 per student per month might be adding a lot of cost to their already stretched budgets. What of kind of other options are out there? And have you thought about this? Is this something for Google for philanthropy, maybe? Uh, so, you know, we worked hard from both Google and our partners to get, get Chromebooks uh, very attractively priced. You know, you have to understand when you add in support, maintenance, warranty, replacement, and automatic hardware uh, lifecycle upgrades. It's an incredible value proposition for schools. Uh, I fully understand how much they are strapped, but we hope you know uh, this model will help more schools take the leap, along with support from many other people. So, And um, let's step back one second, and one thing that came up during the keynote, but also the press conference afterwards, is kind of this little bit of different visions, as you expressed it, between Android and Chrome within Google. And I think this is also something that consumers will face because nowadays there's tablets out there that compete with notebook computers, of course, and then tablets have accessories and Google just launched accessories, so you're going to have keyboards for tablets. Why should somebody invest in a new notebook instead of a tablet that maybe runs Android? So you know, we want consumers to choose. Uh, when I said there's a different vision, there's not just a different, there's a different vision from all other operating systems today. You know, it's unique, you know, it's designed around the web. No one else is doing what we are doing. Uh, which is why we are doing it, because it's a genuine consumer choice. You know, today, you know, I use both, I'm very comfortable with them, and I clearly realize what purposes they serve. Uh, many people who ask this question, when, they give, when I give them a Chromebook, they stop asking that question. I think it's very intuitive once you get it. Because most people today uh, use the web on a computer with a full-size screen and a keyboard. You know, data, this is not an opinion, data shows you can measure it, it's greater than 90%. So that's the experience we are going after and we want to improve that experience. Maybe one last question. Um, this bigger vision of um, ridding people of the, the painful moments of operating systems and bringing everything online with Chrome, um, it's of course something that other companies are looking at a little bit as well, maybe not as aggressively when you go to Microsoft and their cloud offerings. Uh, when do you think are we at a point where, people, where operating systems don't even matter anymore at all? Um, you know, I think computing will always matter. Whether you care about different layers, I don't know. But people want computing as a service. We've always felt that. That's what most people want. I mean, you want to use your application. When you turn your TV on, you don't want to think about the operating system on your TV. You want to watch a program. Uh, but computers don't work that way. You know, most people have to understand 
to have the latest version of this application. I have to update something. So I think we have lost, uh, what we're trying to do is present computing as a service. Computing will always be core to people's lives and we're just trying to make it better. Thank you very much.